In this course, we need to be aware of two different types of consciousness, normal waking consciousness and altered states of consciousness. We can understand normal waking consciousness as a state where an individual is awake and alert to stimuli, including thoughts, feelings and perceptions. Comparatively, altered states of consciousness are characterised by differences in awareness, emotions and perceptions. Basically, any state of consciousness that is not normal waking consciousness is an altered state of consciousness. We can compare normal waking consciousness and altered states of consciousness in numerous ways. These ways are stated by Vika in the study design, so it's important to be able to characterise each type of consciousness based on these categories. Below this video, you will find an overview of many of these differences. But for now, let's focus on how to answer a specific question on consciousness. Here is one example from the 2012 VCAR exam. In the case study, Jason has hit his head whilst playing football with Eric at school. The question reads, describe one characteristic of an altered state of consciousness. How could Eric use this to determine Jason's state of consciousness? Now, there are two parts to this question and it is worth two marks in total. What do you think the mark allocation would be here, Angus? Well, as there are two marks and two parts to the question, we can reasonably assume that one mark will be for describing a characteristic of an altered state of consciousness, and that the other mark will be used for explaining how Eric could use the characteristic to determine Jason's state of consciousness. Thanks, Angus. Remember, there are many characteristics of consciousness that we could use for this question. Let's choose the first one, levels of awareness. Now, we need to provide a description of that. For example, in an altered state of consciousness, there tends to be distorted levels of awareness. This may be characterised by confused or different experiences of thoughts, feelings and perceptions when compared to a normal waking consciousness. So now, for the second mark, we need to explain how Eric could use the levels of awareness to determine Jason's state of consciousness. We could say something like this. Eric could test Jason's levels of awareness in order to test his state of consciousness. Eric could see if Jason knew where he was, what day of the week it was, what his name was, or other questions that he would be able to answer accurately if he was in a normal waking consciousness. If Jason failed to do this, he would most likely be in an altered state of consciousness. There are many different types of altered states of consciousness too. We'll look at some of these in the next video. Keep on studying, U12s.